Hola, soy Rosa y bueno, ya sabéis que os llamo desde prisión. Yo, por lo que he pasado, por ejemplo, eh, todo, todo esta, esta... The person you heard is Rosa Peral. In the quiet hours of a seemingly ordinary day, a discovery in the outskirts of Barcelona sent shockwaves through the heart of the community. A car engulfed in flames hid a grim secret that would reveal a story of love, betrayal, and tragedy. In Spanish, in the 911 call, she is saying, I didn't do it, I haven't killed anyone, and I loved Pedro. I had no motive for them to say that I could have seen it if I didn't want to be with Pedro. I would have left him, just like at other times, I left other relationships. Rosa Peral talked over the phone. The victim, Pedro Rodriguez, a dedicated officer of the Barcelona Municipal Police, was found in the remnants of his own vehicle. His life was brutally cut short. Behind the false display of routine and respectability, a complex web of relationships was quietly fraying, leading to a point of no return. Rosa Peral and Albert Lopez, colleagues within the same police force, were linked with Pedro in a complex love triangle. What began as friendship and love turned into jealousy and lies, leading to a terrible act that shocked everyone. This story, emerging from the flames, is not just a story of personal downfall. It's a harrowing journey into the darkest corners of human emotions and the irreversible consequences of our choices. Through the lives of those involved, we confront the unsettling truth about the fine line between love and hate, right and wrong. Pedro Rodriguez was known as a hardworking and caring police officer in Barcelona. Born around 1979, he lived a life dedicated to serving his community. But beneath the uniform, Pedro was a family man, facing the ups and downs of life like anyone else. Rosa Peral, another member of the Barcelona police force, crossed paths with Pedro. Growing up in a family that came from Andalusia to Barcelona, she worked her way into the police force with determination. Rosa was not just a colleague to Pedro, their relationship grew into something more, filled with complexity and challenges. Between committing a sin and committing a crime, and the prosecutors merely wanted to blur that line and make both things one and the same. During the trial, it was established that Albert and Rosa had once again started talking in April 2017, just days before Pedro was murdered. Now, the prosecution claimed that Rosa and Albert were making their plan on the calls and trying to decipher what they needed to keep in mind and what they should do so that the police did not get any incriminating evidence against them. Albert Lopez was a reserved man who kept to himself outside of his close circle of friends. A passionate boxer, his fiery temper sometimes spilled over into his professional life as a police officer. Lopez and his fellow officer, Rosa Peral, began having an affair in 2012 at a time when Peral was still married to another man. Their clandestine relationship added layers of tension and conflict to an already complicated situation within their police unit. Years later, Peral struck up a relationship with another colleague, Rodriguez. Though she and Rodriguez eventually moved in together, Peral continued her on-again, off-again affair with Lopez behind Rodriguez's back. The triangular web of betrayal and deceit eventually unraveled. Lopez confronted Rodriguez and admitted to his ongoing connection with Peral, causing great turbulence between all three. At some point after this confrontation, Lopez and Peral reconciled and made the fateful decision to conspire to remove Rodriguez from the picture entirely. What began as a classic story of forbidden love and unprofessional behavior in the workplace took a turn towards a more sinister path into much darker territory, culminating in jealousy, rage, and an act of violence that would shatter multiple lives. These three lives, connected by work and entangled by personal feelings set the stage for a story that would captivate and horrify a nation. From the outset, their stories were marked by the contrast between public duty and private desires, between the image of professional calm and the storms of personal conflict. As we explore their paths, the story of ambition, love, and betrayal unfolds, leading to a tragic end. As summer approached in 2017, the intricate relationships between Pedro, Rosa, and Albert reached a breaking point. What began as personal entanglements within the confines of the Barcelona police force spiraled into a dark narrative of jealousy and betrayal. Pedro found himself tragically caught in the crosshairs of a sinister scheme driven by jealousy and betrayal. One which he was largely unaware was unfolding around him. 
What began as an ordinary evening took a dangerous turn as a carefully arranged plan set into motion by two of Pedro's colleagues transformed the night into the backdrop for an unthinkable crime. The precise incidents of those terrible hours are still unknown today. However, the conclusion was horrifyingly clear. Pedro was subdued, his defenses compromised by those he had formerly considered friends and confidants in the police department. With chilling precision, his former friends Rosa Peral and Albert Lopez took advantage of Pedro's vulnerability and trust. The methods they used to violently end his life were brutal and calculated, a stark testament to the depravity their jealousy and thirst for vengeance had fueled. What should have been just another routine night on the job instead marked the moment that long-simmering personal tensions, hidden affairs, and the darkest of human impulses converged, resulting in an act of shocking betrayal that robbed an innocent man of his life. In the aftermath, with their grim task completed, Rosa and Albert faced the daunting challenge of concealing their deed. They placed Pedro's body in his own car, a silent witness to the tragedy that had unfolded. Under the cover of darkness, they drove to a remote location near the Foix Reservoir, a place chosen for its solitude and the unlikelihood of discovery. There, in the quiet hours before dawn, they set the vehicle ablaze, hoping to erase any evidence of their crime. The flames consumed the car, hiding the horror of what it contained, but they could not obliterate the truth. Back in 2017, the Rosa Peral case got a lot of media attention, and it became the talk of the town. Everybody had perceptions and opinions that they had formed even before Rosa went to trial, and Rosa's past life just added fuel to the fire. As the sun rose, revealing the charred remnants of the vehicle, a grim scene awaited discovery. The investigation that followed would reveal the meticulously laid plans of Rosa and Albert, exposing the depth of their betrayal. The evidence painstakingly gathered by investigators painted a vivid picture of the crime, leading to the arrest and subsequent trial of both individuals. This tragic incident, marked by deception and loss, left an indelible mark on the community and the Barcelona police force. The quest for justice for Pedro, a man whose life was cut tragically short, became a rallying cry for all those seeking to understand how love could turn so violently into tragedy. In the aftermath of the grim discovery near the Foix Reservoir on May 4, 2017, investigators were faced with a scene of devastation. The charred remains of a car, reduced to almost nothing by the fire, concealed a tragedy that would unravel a complex web of relationships and secrets. Within the burnt-out shell, a body was found practically turned to ashes, making identification challenging. Yet a vital clue emerged from the wreckage, the vehicle's chassis number, pointing unmistakably to Pedro Rodriguez, a respected member of Barcelona's local police force, the Guardia Urbana. Further investigation revealed remnants of a prosthetic device resistant to the flames, confirming beyond doubt that the victim was indeed Rodriguez. Committed the crime or not, in fact, it tries to ascertain if she got a fair trial and if due process of law was followed. So, let's find out what the makers have to say. The circumstances surrounding the case drew immediate attention due to the victims and the suspects' affiliations with the police force. The two, known to be close to Pedro, both professionally and personally, became the focus of the investigation. Investigators delved into the trio's past, uncovering a tangled history of love, jealousy, and betrayal. Colleagues and friends painted a picture of a volatile love triangle, with Pedro unknowingly at the center. Rosa and Albert's relationship, marked by its intensity and secrecy, raised suspicions about their involvement in the crime. The breakthrough came as digital evidence and forensic analysis began to align. Phone records indicated an alarming pattern of communication between Rosa and Albert leading up to the night of the incident. Surveillance footage captured movements consistent with the timeline of the crime further implicating the pair. In a pivotal moment of the investigation, a series of phone calls made by Rosa Peral to a trusted friend came to light, significantly complicating the narrative. Publicly available on a news agency's YouTube channel, these calls feature Peral insisting on her innocence with emotional fervor. She states, I didn't do it. I haven't killed anyone. And I loved Pedro. I had no motive for them to say that I could have seen it if I didn't want to be with Pedro. I would have left him. You know, just like at other times, I left other relationships. It makes no sense. There's no reason for me to do something like that to the person by my side. What makes no sense is that being in my house and having my daughters, who are four and six years old, in the next room, they tell me that I had planned, that I stopped planning with the person I love. Precisely, they are the ones I believe saved me because the maternal instinct made me go up to where they were while talking to me. 
What I'm very clear about is that he surely came earlier for me than for him. The sick jealousy, because he couldn't see us happy, and his ego couldn't bear that I was planning a future with Pedro, that I was planning to have children, that I was planning to get married in the future, that got to him. Moreover, he didn't know how to organize on some occasion, both by email and by WhatsApp, the threats. Moreover, one of the proofs of the hatred he had for seeing Pedro is that he had him saved in his phone as Pedro, son of a bitch. She claimed that the media has been harsh and another phone call leaked. All the relationships that I could have had in my previous life, my sentimental relationships with my previous life, have nothing to do with the life I had with Pedro. Not at all. And my marital relationship when I already started with Pedro was non-existent. It was also a very toxic relationship. I don't understand the relation of now being judged and crucified for all this. It does not make me a bad mother. It does not make me a bad professional. It does not make me a bad person. Person, and much less does it make me a murderer. The press has been very harsh on me, giving qualifications, saying that I am a cold person, a warrior, a manipulator, that I am a pure bombshell when I consider myself none of those qualifications that have been made very lightly without any motivation. In a shocking revelation, investigators found that Peral and Lopez had been driving around in Pedro's car for a day after his disappearance. They reportedly made a final stop at Peral's ex-husband's house before setting the car on fire. This chilling detail highlighted the calculated steps taken to cover up their heinous act, adding a layer of premeditation to the crime. Forensic experts worked tirelessly to identify the remains found in the vehicle. Despite the fire's damage, a unique titanium prosthesis in Pedro's spine provided a crucial piece of evidence, confirming his identity and solidifying the case against Rosa and Albert. The Mossos de Squadra, Catalonia's regional police, arrested Rosa Peral, Rodriguez's partner, and Albert Lopez, her former boyfriend. Both suspects, like the victim, were entangled in a web of personal and professional controversies, including previous allegations of police misconduct. The community and police force grappled with the shock and betrayal, struggling to reconcile the esteemed colleagues they thought they knew with the calculated criminals unveiled by the investigation. The judge in Villanova, Ian Legeltru, overseeing the investigation, ordered both suspects to be held without bail, charged with either murder. Which one will be determined as the investigation progresses, she said in a release. Peral and Lopez, once united in their duties within the Guardia Urbana's daytime support unit, now find themselves on opposite sides of a chilling narrative. In their statements to the court, accusations flew. Peral claimed Lopez had taken the life of Rodriguez and coerced her into silence with threats against her daughters. If you don't help me, I will make your daughters choke on their own vomit, he allegedly told Peral. Lopez countered, asserting he only discovered Rodriguez's body and assisted Peral out of loyalty to their rekindled relationship. Rodriguez's and Peral's controversial pasts further complicated this tangled story of love and betrayal. Rodriguez had faced suspension for attacking a motorist, while Peral had been embroiled in a porno revenge scandal with another ex-boyfriend from the force. Lopez, too, brought a history of violence to the narrative, having been convicted of attacking a street vendor. Amidst the unfolding investigation, Peral's behavior aroused suspicion. Despite claiming that Rodriguez had disappeared following a fight, she made no immediate attempts to report his absence or reach out to him. Her composed demeanor, even as she participated in a tribute at the site of the burned car and requested a bodyguard for her own protection, painted a picture of someone hiding a deeper truth. The theory that emerged from the Masos' investigation suggested a fatal love triangle. Peral and Lopez, believed to have rekindled their relationship behind Rodriguez's back, were thought to have been discovered by Rodriguez, triggering the events that led to his murder. As the community grappled with the shocking revelations, Rodriguez's friends remembered him as a man deeply in love, his affection for Peral evident in his messages and actions. The investigation into Rodriguez's death not only exposed the dark undercurrents within the Guardia Urbana, but also sparked broader discussions on police accountability and the need for scrutiny when officers face multiple complaints. As the case moved toward trial, the quest for justice for Rodriguez continued as a poignant reminder of the human stories behind the headlines. Because only then could they say that they were guilty of committing the murder of Pedro's. The trial of Rosa Peral and Albert Lopez for Pedro Rodriguez's horrible life, ending incidents, unfolded with a visible tension that reflected the gravity of the crime and its impact on the community, especially within the ranks of the Guardia Urbana. 
Barcelona's local police force. The courtroom became the arena for a meticulous examination of the evidence and the intricate web of personal relationships that led to a brutal murder. The case hinged on several key pieces of evidence that survived the inferno that consumed Pedro Rodriguez's vehicle. Among these were the chassis number of the car and remnants of a prosthetic device, crucial in confirming the identity of the victim as Rodriguez himself. This evidence led investigators to Rosa Peral, Rodriguez's partner, and Albert Lopez, her ex-boyfriend, who both had a complicated relationship with the victim that included professional controversies and accusations of misconduct. Somewhere, Rosa's image once again became her enemy, and the court ruled that the evidence was not strong enough to establish Oscar's guilt. The media loves a femme fatale, and there were journalists who agreed that if the story had been presented in a manner where Rosa was shown in a good light, then it wouldn't have sold as much. The investigative team led by Sergeant George Dominic encountered Rosa's unnerving composure when they arrived at her residence to deliver the grim news of Rodriguez's death. Her refusal to come to the station for a statement, coupled with her suggestion that her ex-husband, Ruben, could be behind the crime, raised immediate suspicions. As the investigation unfolded, the detective's focus sharpened on Rosa and Albert, especially after discovering their secret affair. Rosa's subsequent voluntary appearance at the police station, where she offered a new version of events implicating a supposed stalker, only added to the inconsistencies in her narrative. As the case unraveled in court, the involvement of Rosa's family brought a poignant dimension to the proceedings. The inability of Rosa's daughter to testify due to legal protections for minors left a gaping hole in the narrative, one that could have offered invaluable insights into the events of that fateful night. This absence was compounded by the controversy surrounding the testimony of Antonia, Ruben's current partner, who was initially expected to relay critical information allegedly shared by Rosa's eldest daughter about the night of the crime. The legal limitation on her testimony, based on it being secondhand information, significantly impacted the prosecution case. Rose's recording from a call about her daughter's trauma was also released. She said, I don't understand where the trauma is because if girls of four and six years old who were at that time, if they had a real trauma, they wouldn't be with the joy or the desire to see me that they have today. If there really is a trauma, it's always there. Again, we want to clarify here that we don't know if she committed the murder or not. But the fact that the prosecution played with perceptions when their case was very weak cannot be denied. Also, the media had a huge role to play in the scheme of things. Complicating matters further, Francisco Peral, Rosa's father, found himself entangled in the emotional and moral quandary of testifying against his daughter. His initial statements to the police, which could have implicated Rosa, were later recanted in court, adding to the trial's complexity. During the investigation, the father admitted through tears that he lied because his daughter had asked him to. I didn't see Pedro at the house on May 2nd. I was wrong when I said it, he explained. His fluctuating account, whether influenced by familial loyalty or the weight of the truth, underscored the trial's deeply personal stakes. During the trial, both Peral and Lopez accused each other of the homicide, presenting conflicting accounts that further complicated the case. Rosa's claim that Lopez committed the murder out of jealousy clashed with Lopez's assertion that he found Rodriguez's body and helped dispose of it under duress. This back and forth between the defendants, each attempting to shift blame, was a central theme of the proceedings. A search of Rosa's home turned up incriminating materials, including Rodriguez's badge, credentials, and most damningly, his mobile phone. These revelations played a crucial role in solidifying the idea that the pair planned and carried out Rodriguez's murder. The trial was marked by high public and media interest, underscored by the prosecution's focus on Rose's behavior in the months leading up to the trial. The acquisition of an anonymous disposable phone by Rosa was presented as evidence of her intent to commit the crime, a narrative supported by the detailed examination of her actions and messages. In the trial about Pedro Rodriguez's sad ending, many people spoke, including Rosa Peral's ex-husband, Ruben C. His words in court made things clearer. He said that Rosa had created a lot of problems with her relationships. Back in December 2016, she was close to him, Pedro and Albert Lopez, simultaneously. Ruben even found out that Rosa had hired detectives to follow him just so she could win a court fight about who their daughters should live with. The people trying to prove Rosa and Albert did something wrong said they tried to make it look like Ruben was to blame for Pedro's death. They thought if Pedro's phone was found near Ruben's home, the police would think he did it. But Ruben wasn't involved, and only Rosa knew where he lived. 
On February 3rd, 2020, after intense deliberations and amidst heightened scrutiny, the jury found Rosa Peral and Albert Lopez guilty of taking the life of Pedro Rodriguez. Rosa was sentenced to 25 years in prison, receiving a harsher sentence than Lopez due to her closer personal connection to the victim. Both were ordered to compensate Rodriguez's family with 885,000 euros, reflecting the severity of their actions and the loss suffered by the family. After the court decided Rosa and Albert were guilty, Rosa didn't give up. She tried to change the court's mind by asking higher courts to look at her case again. These are big courts in Catalonia and even the Supreme Court of the whole country. But in September 2021, these courts said the first decision was right. However, the Supreme Court did agree that Rosa planned what she did ahead of time, but said that what Antonia, Ruben's new partner, said in court couldn't be used. The Netflix documentary Burning Body and the series Rosa Peral's Tapes delve into the complex and tragic case surrounding Rosa Peral, whose involvement in the notorious El Crimen de la Guardia Urbana, the crime of the city guard, captivated Spain. These productions explore the intricate web of relationships and the subsequent homicide that thrust Peral into the media spotlight, framing her within a narrative of promiscuity and manipulation that influenced public perception in the course of her trial. Both Burning Body and Rosa Peral's tapes showcase how media portrayal played a significant role in shaping the narrative around Rosa Peral. Described as a promiscuous police officer entangled in relationships with Pedro Rodriguez, Albert Lopez, and her ex-husband Ruben, Peral's character and motives were scrutinized. The documentary highlights her first interview from prison where she asserts her victimhood to media sensationalism, emphasizing the prejudgment she faced even before her trial began. While Burning Body presents Peral as a conflicted lover caught in a web of relationships, Rosa Peral's tapes offers her a platform to narrate her side of the story, portraying herself as a victim of circumstance. Despite their different approaches, both productions navigate the complexities of the case, revealing the challenges of unraveling the truth behind Rodriguez's murder. The release of these Netflix productions reignited discussions about the case, with some viewing them as attempts to humanize Peral and question the evidence against her. Critics argue that the series and documentary could sway public opinion, potentially overshadowing the legal findings and the victim's memory. Significantly, the airing of Rosa Peral's tapes, which includes Rosa's first prison interview, has led to an investigation for potential misuse of internal communications within the prison system. The documentary's portrayal of Rosa's innocence and criticism of the societal and judicial treatment she received has sparked debate over the ethical implications of granting such interviews and the potential impact on the victim's families and public perception. Rosa Peral's participation in Rosa Peral's tapes and her criticism of the media and judicial system underscore the ongoing debate over the ethics of true crime storytelling. The documentary has faced backlash from participants who claim they were misled about its objective, fearing it serves more as a platform for Peral's defense than an unbiased examination of the case. Both Netflix series have reignited interest in the case, offering diverging perspectives on the events that led to Pedro Rodriguez's murder. While Burning Body explores the background and possible motives behind the crime, Rosa Peral's tapes presents a narrative of victimhood and injustice, challenging viewers to reconsider their stance on the case. These these productions not only recount a tragic tale of love, jealousy, and betrayal, but also prompt a broader discussion on media influence, character judgment, and the complexities of truth and perception in high-profile criminal cases. Rosa Peral currently serves her sentence at the Masenrique prison in Tarragona, Spain, a stark end to a series of events that began with a web of love, jealousy, and betrayal, but concluded with a rigorous pursuit of justice for Pedro Rodriguez. Rosa said in a call that she wants to get justice as soon as possible to enjoy a normal life with her daughters. That's what she said. I'm eager for the truth to come out, for real justice, to dismantle all the lies, to be able to rebuild my life with my daughters, to try to have a somewhat normal Christmas, and to have the opportunity to miss Pedro because until now, I have not had it. The story about Pedro Rodriguez's sad end and the court case of Rosa Peral and Albert Lopez has caught many people's attention. It's not just because of the crime itself, but also because it makes us think about bigger things like how society, the news, and courts handle such situations. When we watch or read these stories, either made up or real, it makes us think about our own opinions and how they affect the people in these storylines. This whole story with Rosa, Pedro, and Albert shows us how complicated feelings like love and jealousy can get and how important it is to keep looking for the real truth and to make 
make sure justice is done while everyone is watching. Remember, when we hear about cases like this, it's a chance for us to think about how we see things and what we believe is right or wrong. It's important to keep an open mind and remember that there's always more to a story than what we first hear or see. As we finish this story about Rosa Peral and everything that happened, let's think about the roles we play when we hear such stories. How do the stories we hear and share affect the real people involved? It's a good time to talk about how important it is to be fair and careful with our judgments. What do you think about the way stories like Rosa's are shared with the world? Do you think it's fair? How does it make you feel about the justice system and the news? Let's chat about it. Sharing your thoughts can help everyone think more deeply about these big issues. Hit the subscribe button for more thrilling stories.